you all for coming, for braving this scary uh, South Florida winter storm we're having. It's kind of unusual for us, and normally um, when it rains like this in South Florida, nobody comes out of their houses, and who could blame them? But So I really appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Um, also, I appreciate Andrew and Evan for inviting me to do this talk on public art um, for Art Fort Lauderdale. I'm very excited to be here. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about myself so that you can have some context as we move forward and talk more about public art. So first and foremost, I'm an artist. This is one of my pieces. It was in uh, Fat Village, um, I think in 2016. And then it was in a fair um, for Art Basel in 2017. And now it's probably moving somewhere in Miami soon, hopefully. Point is, this is a text piece that I do. I do multiple kinds of artwork, but I've been doing artwork since I was like five years old. I've been painting since then, and I do all kinds of stuff. But I'm also a graphic designer, so I kind of incorporate both of those. And I'm also a feminist, so kind of gets all, all, of the, all of the points. So this particular piece is made out of sequence, and when the wind blows, the piece moves. And it's really, really quite, quite beautiful. And that's one of the things that fascinates me the most about um, the type of work, the artwork that I do, my practice. I like a lot of shiny things and things that move and shimmer and catch your eye. So this piece is meant to catch your eye first, then you see the message, then you think about the message. And it has double meanings on purpose because I want people to play around with that idea of what is the true meaning. And obviously, the true meaning is whatever you, as the viewer, takes on, onto it. So if you think it's dirty, then that's where you're taking it. If you think that she comes first is about your mom or your sister or your, you know, your grandmother or women in general, um, then that, that may be the answer too. I really enjoy letting people figure these types of things out. So first and foremost, I want you guys to know that I'm an artist. Secondly, I wear a lot of hats. So the second thing that I do is, um, this is my painting studio that I have with my significant other, Brian Geffen, sitting in the audience. And in the, in the front of it, the storefront, which is why it, <laughs> it has that name, is our gallery. So we curate shows there. And then we have our painting studio in the back. And um, it's super fun. And this is in downtown Hollywood. So that's another thing that's m related to obviously my artist and curation practice. So the third thing that I do is I also have a company called Trift and Farb and I curate and project manage public art, mostly contemporary art murals, which is what we're going to be talking about a lot today is my experience with doing public art for the city of Hollywood, Florida. I've been doing it since uh, 2012 and I work um, with them for the project called Downtown Hollywood Mural Project. And it is a um, contemporary art mural project, which is public art. So a lot of times we think about public art. We think about if, you, if you've been driving on Griffin Road and you go by the airport, there's this really cool geometric metal sculpture that's right, um, right on the street. And that's public art. If you go to a big office building and you see some sort of sculpture in the front, that's public art. But my favorite type of public art, the kind of public art that speaks to me, are these murals. Because you can take something that was once a just boring wall, a rectangle, and make it into something like this. This is nice and easy, and this is their mural of a swimming pool. And it kind of makes your mind think about that, and what do you correlate with swimming pools? I mean, I correlate, and I think about um, my childhood experiences in the summer, going to people's houses and swimming in the pools and having a lot of floaties, so I have good memories of it. Most people do. Most people think about that in South Florida. It's very important to have access to a swimming pool in the summer, especially if you're a kid, you want to be by the pool. So this has a lot of nostalgia, and it has a lot of deco colors. Um, so this is the type of public art that I'm into, and this is the public art that I'm going to talk about. And we all know about this. It's, it's very trendy. So I'm going to first go into the history of it, and I'm going to talk about some of the things that were in Wynwood and in, in, in Miami um, a long time before Wynwood is like it, like it is now. Um, so I'm going to quickly talk about this. This is Brandon Opelka. This is um, one of the, the um, members of a graffiti crew called MSG. And they did this wall a long, long, long time ago. I think probably, I want to say 2006 or 2007, 
but you can see all of the different kind of caricatures and people doing different kinds of things. You can see like that's somebody's name and there's like a background. So there's all kinds of stuff. And this is public art. This is not vandalism. This actually was commissioned. So it's not just like a graffiti thing, but it, it's been down here for quite some time. So um, this is another one and this guy is from San Francisco and his name is Reyes. It's a little bit easier to understand, right? As far as that type of, um, I want to say graffiti type of mural where they, they use their names. It's kind of like advertising. You know, if you see the same McDonald's or Coca-Cola logo out over and over after a while, it becomes, it becomes something familiar to you. So this is another piece that was in Wynwood and from a long time ago, I think this was there probably from 2007. It's not there anymore. Um, and this is two different artists. It's Retina um, did the background, and then El Mac did the child in the foreground. And the interesting thing about the Retina pieces is that all of those letters, um, he created them so like himself. It's his own style of calligraphy. So each letter represents another letter of our alphabet, and then he writes poetry and, and uh, messages through that. So kind of really, it, it's really interesting because the way that I view it is a pattern, but then once I found out about this, I kind of started looking for letters. And there's a lot of political murals now. If you look online, if you go on Instagram, you're going to see tons of graffiti murals and tons of street art type murals, which there's a difference um, of political stuff. But just so you know, this is uh, Bush and Cheney from by Sever, and this is you know this was in Wynwood years and years ago from a long time ago, so it, it's been around. It's not a unique and new thing, but it's uh, something that continues on, that practice. Um, and so again, I'm, I'm just giving you history of kind of like some, some public art in Wynwood from a long time ago. This guy is especially famous. His name is Black Lorette, and he um, is kind of known as the first stencil artist. He started doing this, I believe, in the early 80s in France. Um, and this was in Miami. He came to Miami, and I think in like again the the mid 2000s, and did that. And you can see his little. It's a stencil though, so it's not. Does every, everybody I'm sure knows what a stencil is? It's like cut out of cardboard, <coughs> so it's not freehand painted. Um, this is another mural that's from a long time ago, and I and I really like this one again in Woodwood. Um, and it's two people kind of hugging each other in this what looks like acid rain. And again, this is stencil, and it's just really, really beautiful, the way that it kind of, of plays um, with light and dark. And this is a very, very famous, the one of the most famous street artists who used to be a graphic designer also. His name's Shepard Ferry. He still does graphic design, actually. And he, did, he was the artist, the illustrator, who did that famous Obama po portrait that was like in different colors. So that's one of his, and you can see it's Obey. Shepard Ferry goes by Obey also. So now, after I've given you the history, you see that it's been here for a while, but kind of in this raw kind of street form. So I started working with the Downtown Hollywood Mural Project in 2012, and I wanted to take my love for visual art, traditional kind of really beautiful paintings, contemporary art, and mix it with my, my love of street art and graffiti type art, um, which is outside and for the public to view. And that's one of the best things about, this is why I'm so passionate about um, this type of contemporary art mural, is because if you have, let's say, a group of, of school children and you show them a big marble sculpture, they may think that that's pretty cool, um, but if you show them, like, for example, the London Police mural, they're going to get really excited about it because it's more relatable. And um, also, a lot of people get very intimidated uh, about going into museums and galleries. They think, it's not for me. They're going to ask me questions. I don't want to deal with that. And so when you're talking about these big contemporary art murals, they're, they're there for the public to enjoy 24 hours and, and seven days a week. And now this, is the, this project, the mural project, is not uh, unique in the respect that there are many different types of projects all around the world, all around uh, this nation that do murals. Um, so some are done for different reasons, but a lot of times they are done, these contemporary art murals or any type of uh, painting on walls, is done to reinvigorate an area that, in my opinion, the way that I say, needs a hug, like an area needs a hug. And if they have a lot of 
blank walls, it's kind of a good fit because it's not a super, super expensive nor permanent way, which is one of the advantages sometimes and one of the disadvantages other times um, to invigorate an area depending on what type of artwork goes up on the walls. So with this particular project, I wanted to get the highest quality, most uh, wide range of public art we could have to make downtown Hollywood a uh, much more interesting, surprising, exhilarating, unique place to go to, right? So it's not just about um, putting, getting artists to do stuff on walls. You have to really kind of think about what you're doing with each um, building. You have to think about architecture and all that stuff. So I'm just going to take you on a virtual tour of some of the, the murals that I've curated for the Downtown Hollywood Mural Project. Here's the map. So you can see they're all really in a nice little walkable area. And I'm going to show you some before or afters, just so you also have some context. So this is like a nice, long, rectilinear wall, right? And when I spoke to the, the property owner, um, because I work with property owners because they pay for all the materials, and the CRA, which is the Community Redevelopment Agency, that's under the umbrella of the city of Hollywood. That's who I work for, and I work with the property owners. Um, and and uh, this guy was a surfer, and he really wanted something to do with the ocean. And the project's only about a mile away from the ocean, so it's very close. So I gave him a bunch of artists to pick from, and he chose Ernesto Moranje. This is the sketch that Ernesto did, and this is Ernesto working on his mural. You can see it's quite a long, large wall. And this is the final mural, and it's beautiful. And you can see um, that not only is it a turtle, like a semi-realistic turtle, but this turtle has a crazy shell and a beautiful wave in the back. And the wave is actually made up of little like leaf shapes. So it's kind of like this mixture of nature. A lot of the murals have to do with nature and the ocean. And so here's another really kind of boring wall. And remember how we talked about stencils before? So this one is a stencil mural. This was the rendering. And here he is applying it. And it's, like, it's a little bit of the, it, the colors are different, and the model is different in the final mural, which you'll see in a second. But this is Logan Hicks, and he, um, he's from um, New York. He lives there now. He was actually born in Key West, which is kind of interesting. Um, so he does these stencils, right? And on the mural, you're going to see the final mural. There are so many layers. I think there was like 10 or 13 layers, different layers of stencils, and just really, really beautiful work. So you know it's like painstaking. So he takes pictures of these models, and then he makes the stencils himself as far as designing them in the computer, and then they, they get laser printed out, laser cut out. But it's a, it's a process. OK, here's another, another wall here. Mm. This is a big one. And this is the rendering. And this was Roan from Australia. And here he is painting. And this is what ends up, and it's just a stunner. But he picks the models himself, and he just kind of does so many of these across the world all the time. And they're photorealistic, and they're, they're just beautiful. And um, it's a stunner. When you see it in person, this one's kind of, it stops you in your tracks if you've never seen it. Yes, ma'am. Is that spray paint? No, this is, actually, this is actually latex. And let me go back. So you can see him using a, a broom as a brush. And what he does is he takes, he did this with this m entire mural with about three gallons of latex house paint, right? And he has a water sprayer and he sprays down while he's painting and he scrubs it in. And, he, and if you look at the mural close, like here on her lips, you can't really see it, but you can really, really, really barely see, but there's some dripping going here. And you can see in, in person, there's a lot of like small, beautiful, drips, right? And that's from rinsing, constantly adding water. And it also conserves the paint a lot. And the fun thing is you see the hair, right? Like you see all this, the brush strokes of the hair. So he like made his own brush with this pole and like duct taped and like, and he, and big sweeping arm movements. And this is one of the joys of my job is that I get to experience each muralist paints differently. Each muralist has a different way of getting their sketch up on the wall. Each muralist has a different way of painting. Each muralist uses different materials. So it's fascinating to see every mural is a different mural. And every mural is really, really interesting and unique in their own right. And I get to learn so much about the process, which I also find very interesting. Yes, ma'am. So you said you, you work with 
It works both ways. It works both ways. Sometimes I see a wall and sometimes the property owner contacts me. Um, so yes, the, the property owner pays for all the materials and anything that the artist would need to complete their mural and then the CRA pays them for the actual painting of the mural. Do you understand what I'm saying? So m almost their labor. The artist, yes. So the artists do get paid. To do Yes. No. Not at all. Yes. No. Oh, just per wall. Yes. Oh. Okay. And if there's two people, then they each get paid. Like if it's a collabo wall, which you'll see some soon. Mm -hmm. So this is another wall, um, and this is this one goes all the way up to like 24, 28 feet in the back, and it's like super, super long. It's beautiful, beautiful wall. Uh, that's that's happens to me. I just look at walls that are blank, and I'm like, beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful wall, and people are like, you're insane. I'm like, it's fine. So this one is uh, Tati's rendering, and you can see all the mural, uh, all the mermaids. There's six of them, and you can see how the hair color gradates, right, from the magenta to the lime. And so here she is painting it, and here is pretty much the final mural. And you could see all of the mermaids with their hair, and this one is also the detail on it is insane. It's beautiful. Um, here's another one. This is your generic kind of one-story office situation building with some windows, and you might say to yourself, like, how is that gonna, how's a mural gonna look good on that building? And, and to you I say, flamingos. So this is by Key Detail. Now, <coughs> interestingly, Key Detail, that's his name, a lot of these murals have two names. He was originally from Belarus, Russia, and he was an architect. So if you look at this mural, you can see it's really tight. It almost looks like a printout, a computer printout. It was all done with spray paint. And the majority of the lines that you see there, I mean, like, the white is actual, like, latex paint. But the majority of the lines and the straight edges and all the detail was done freehand. Because when you have to, when you study architecture, if you know a lot of architects and you just see their sketches, they're very, very detailed. And his wife actually is a muralist as well, and their styles kind of work really well together. And typically, they paint together. But when she came down, she was six months pregnant, so she kind of coached him from across the street. And it was very cute. Um, but he did this really quickly, amazing. So they both live in New York now. This is an oldie but goodie. It is the Mona Lisa building in downtown Hollywood, um, and it's done by Dos Alice. And if you ever see anything in Miami that kind of has that, that broken up uh, photo, uh, photo, photo, kind of graphic photo treatment. There we go. Um, that's usually going to be Dos Alice. They've been doing it for years. And this is. Oh, this one. Okay. So the triangles they did freehand, but the Mona Lisa herself, sh they projected it and they yeah. sketched it in. Oh, and not everybody projects like this one here. This was not projected at all. These guys do tons of murals, and because of its graphic style. This is a collabo. This is two people. This is the London Police, Bob and Chaz. And because, because um, Bob used to be an architectural illustrator, you can actually see the guys right here. They're right here. So he used to be an architectural illustrator, another one. So this is one of the reasons why it's so tight. But you can see like all the detail here. And then typically, that's what Bob does. And then Chaz does all these cool, fun, smiley guys. There's even like an astronaut. And this is another one, this is another mural that has to do with water. Loosely, it's a robot taking care of an aquarium. Um, and they chose Miami Dolphin colors. And uh, to keep it hometown, ho keep that hometown spirit alive, they, and they really liked the dolphins, especially um, Dan Marino. And they're, they're originally from England, and they live in Amsterdam now. And they're like really into Dan Marino. It was very strange, but kind of funny. Um, and this is one of our... I would say like the most kind of like famous types of people that we have in the collection as far as everyday people n that know contemporary art will know Kenny Scharf, right? So this is like really, really cool that we have this in the collection. And um, this is just a collection like of little dudes uh, that he, these little characters. And when I, and I do the, mur the mural tour, I do a mural tour by the way guys, if you ever want to go on the mural tour in like 3D life, 
every third Saturday of the month, either me or someone else will be doing a mural tour in downtown Hollywood. So you can look it up if you go to downtown Hollywood mural project, mural tour, it's wordy, but you, you know what I mean. Anyways, the, my favorite part about this is the um, little dude, the little guys like leaving the, the picture plane. See this one here, this guy here? I think that they're funny and very mischievous. And like I was saying before, when I talk to um, people that have kids around, I always kind of talk about this mural in relation to that movie Inside Out about all the emotions because it's kind of like all the emotions. We have like an angry guy, we have like a silly guy, we have like a kind of sleepy, happy guy, we have mischievous people, you know, there's sad people sometimes. But this is a very, very typical mural that style that he does. If you're familiar with street art and you know the Bowery, Bowery Wall in New York, he's done that one. And that's a, that's a pretty big um, indicator of stature in the street art world. This is Nicole Salcedo and she's from Miami and she is obsessed with plants, as you can see, tropical plants. Mm. She does all of this, this is um, black latex paint and she just goes in here freehand and just takes care of business and just gets it all done. And in this particular project, we have a fair amount of walls where like if, during, if you're there during the day, the cars aren't there or sometimes on a Sunday, the cars aren't there. So whenever there's murals like this where the cars aren't there and I'm walking around, I always see people doing yoga poses for Instagram. There's a lot of Instagramming going on, which we love. So it's, it's super fun to see people doing like handstands and back bends and all kinds of stuff just walking around. So here we are at the nice and easy mural again. You can see it a little bit better and it just looks so refreshing. And I love the Art Deco colors um, that they used. And these, the, these two people, Allison and Jeff, are a real life couple and they just got engaged. And this was their first mural together as a, as a couple that they've ever done and, and so it's special. But you can see the stairs and the diving board. I think that's really cute. It definitely transforms that particular building. Um, this is another collabo mural with a, <laughs> then they're married, they're a married couple. And it's called the, uh, the Yumi Collective. That's their name that they go by. And um, it's a mermaid and a sea turtle, another marine themed mural. But even though we have a great deal of marine murals in the collection, you won't find like the same style. And that is done very purposefully because I want all of the walls to have their own unique look and feel, even though some of them may have that marine thematic um, concept behind them. So we already have a mural with mermaids, but this is another mermaid, right? This is another mermaid. You can see her tail right here. And we have already a mural with um, in the Downtown Hollywood Mural Project with a sea turtle in it. And there's another sea turtle right there. Does it bother anybody? I never hear a complaint about like there's too similar because this is a completely different mural. And it's really, really stunning to see in person done with latex house paint and also spray paint. And it's not one person. This is two people, but I, I can't tell who's done what because it's so seamless. And if you look at their drawing style, because of most of these um, people that do these large contemporary art murals, they also uh, have a, you know, gallery stuff. So you can buy prints, you can buy paintings by them. And so their paintings that they do together also look kind of like they're done by one person. And they've known each other since middle school and they're in their 30s. So it's so, it's just, they're like one person almost. Um, <laughs> This is one of our more well-known murals, and it's, of course, Salvador Dali, Frida Kahlo, and Basquiat, and it was done by Fabio Onrak, who's originally from Brazil, and it's our only mural done with air compressor, which is like that airbrush you would see at the mall, you know? And when I first started looking at his work, um, I was like, wow, he's really good with spray paint because these blends are amazing. And then when he started working, or, and I started talking to him, and he showed me how he's working, I was like, oh, OK. So again, when you see this one in person, the, sh the shading is, is beautiful. And so he did these three artist portraits. And it not only kind of hammers it in that downtown Hollywood when you're, when you're crossing over the tracks, because that's where this mural is located. I'm actually like very close to the tracks right there. Um, but it kind of hammers it home that you're entering an arts district, right? Especially because he didn't just do three portraits. He did three portraits and then added this very, very vibrant graphic element, right? And that kind of makes it even punchier. 
So you, it's like you cannot miss this mural. It's, it's a stunner. So good to see in person. Um, this is one of our latest murals, and it's by Alice Mizrahi, and she is from New York City. And it's our only mural that has this beautiful mosaic tile sun in the background. And sometimes, depending on what time of day, it will reflect on the um, alley there, because it's in an alley, and it will reflect uh, like a disco ball. But it, it's not quite, just like, it's, it's beautiful, though, little patterns. So she does a lot of goddesses, and um, this is kind of like a mother nature person nurturing birds. And her hair looks like the ocean, and it's just a stunner, and there's like gold butterflies. And she does this type of mural all over. And um, she works a lot, again, in her smaller drawings and paintings and all kinds of stuff. She does the same type of stuff. Uh, a lot of goddess, sometimes um, families. Just really, really beautiful work. And um, it's, it's really a fun one to see during the day. I really enjoy this one, especially during the day. Some of them are better during the day, and some of them look good at night, too. Like, this one looks good during the day, but also at night, because if you look here, you can see all of these little metallic things, and if you know about metallics, like I know about metallics, sometimes when the lights are dimmer, or it's like street lights, the metallic catches it differently than just during the day. The bright, bright sunlight can sometimes flatten metallics out like it's kind of doing here. You don't get the full appreciation. So this one actually looks kind of cool at night because it is so vibrant and it does have the metallics. So you can see the color different, uh, difference at night because of the contrast and everything. So this is by Vicky Pierre. And again, her piece is that if you wanted to buy so like a painting from her or anything like that, um, it looks very similar to what she's doing here. And this is a full-on conceptual mural. What she's doing here is taking the female form and translating it into these things that kind of look like clouds or I've heard chewing gum, all kinds of different things. And she talks about this a lot in her work. And so this is like this, this like um, very soft, sumptuous female creature. And you can see it's a female creature because there's bows in the hair here and here and then a couple down there. So this is her idea of femininity, her idea of the female form in, in, a, in a, um, a translating it into like her, her thoughts and, and uh, feelings about femininity. So it's really, really beautiful, um, and I, we like this one a lot. So now that you've seen a bunch of public art, you can kind of tell how exciting it is to take a wall that's just a big, big beige rectangle and take it and change it into something amazing that catches the eye of everybody going by. So what are, what are the benefits of public art? And again, this is why everyone should be supporting it. Obviously, it's kind of like an easy sell. But it creates activity in certain areas. And in downtown Hollywood's uh, case in particular, it adds this credibility now to downtown Hollywood as an arts hub because there's not only the mural project, there's also Art and Culture Center and the Arts Park. And there's even like a, an independent theater down there now. So there's all kinds of stuff like that that it's, it can benefit an area like that you're thinking about. Um, so the other great benefit is that the Roan mural, for example, we have, he is really, really well known. And if you're somebody who's into street art and you find out that there's a Roan mural in Hollywood and you live, you know, in Weston or something, you're going to come to downtown Hollywood to see it. It's just one of those things, if you're, if, even if you live further away, it, because he's, he's that well known. So, so th that's something that also is a pull. And the other thing that I, I really enjoy, especially because I'm an artist, right? It gives artists jobs, and that's really important. So we're giving artists lo jobs, national, local, international, mostly local, almost, I would say, 80% local from the Tri-County area. And that speaks to me a lot because I'm an artist, and I think that it's really cool that, you know, people get jobs. I know that sounds very similar, but I mean, so, uh, simple, but because there's a lot of um, people that, you know, don't want to pay for people to do artwork. And I just like that um, people get paid, obviously. So that's kind of what's going on. We will open it up to um, question and answer. But these are all of my things. If you want to keep in touch, 
you want to be added to some mailing list or whatever, just let me know. Contact me. It's not very hard. Um, and I really, again, I appreciate you guys for coming today. I know that we are having this, I was calling it not the Northeaster, but the Southeaster today. We have the, the nice cold rain, which we're not used to. We're used to the hot rain. Um, so I really appreciate you taking time out of your Saturday and coming and um, participating in, in this lecture. Yes, sir. So that's an excellent question. Okay, so a couple of things. Most of the walls are done with either spray paint or house paint, right? Um, spray paint is different, but spray paint usually has a bit of a longer life depending on the color. Reds fade really fast. House paint is just house paint. So if you paint your house once, you're not done. You know what I mean? Like in X amount of years, depending on where your house is, depending on if you're near the ocean, depending on how much sun it gets, if your house is in the shade, it's going to you know, last longer because it's not getting all of that UV light on it, right? So that's the one thing. So it just really depends on the wall. If you have an east-facing wall that's just getting hammered by the sun, that's going to fade quicker and need to be replaced. And um, actually, we have a mural that is being replaced because of that by the same artist. Uh, the property owner requested the same artist. So we're new mural and it's happening in February. So it just gets, and it's part of the process of street art, and it's part of the process of con these contemporary art murals and anything that you're gonna do in the exterior, unless it's you know, a marble sculpture or something, that's gonna last the test of time, but I'm not sure how, how just you know, giant shiny sculptures resonate with the general populace. I find personally that people enjoy contemporary art murals quite a bit, and they come back, so. Does that answer your question? Oh, the other thing that I wanted to let you know is it is an option. They, we're not forcing them because, the, like I said, the property owners pay for everything. So there is an option that they can put a UV coat on it that will extend the life. Yeah, prevent fading. So I, I'm not the valet, but did you say <laughs> that the um, artists get paid as well as the painters that live in the neighborhood? Yes, the that's correct. Is that, is that in, in a street gallery? Yes, that's. Oh, you, she asked the same question. It's just by wall. It doesn't matter, the square foot. Um, it's, it's all different, so. Oh, so each wall no, each wall gets the same price, but the, the, the materials cost all different. Oh, right. Yeah, I can't, you know what I'm saying? That's up to the property owner also. Oh, so that just cost yeah. Are any of those projects more than $10,000? Not the ones that I should showed you, I don't believe so. I mean, the value, the value of it is probably somewhere around that, but, but you know, if it were like a more of a commercial type mural, but because this is a government sponsored kind of situation, we have a little bit of leeway with regards to, to pricing, if that makes sense. Yes. So here's kind of how, no, there's definitely. So again, because this is all on property owners' property, it's entirely up to them. So they leave the mural up for as long as it's life. Like we had one mural that ended up peeling, right? So we can't have that. So I contact them and I'm like, hey, do you want to like get another mural? Or hey, I see your mural's fading. Do you want to update it? And they either say yes or no. So if they say yes, then we start arranging. If they say no, then what they have to do is take it back to how it looked before. And they, you know, if it's falling apart, otherwise, the, you know, and it's not, it's just as if they had painted their building white and it starts peeling, they're gonna get a code violation, I assume. Or something, there's like something in the code that you have to upkeep, keep, you know, keep your building up. So the same thing, if, you, if the paint is peeling, they gotta fix it. So they either get a new mural or they take it back and it's up to them. All we ever ask, and this is, I mean, believe me, all the murals have been up way longer than this. All we ask of the property owner is that the murals stay up one year. After that, that's all we ask. We only have a one year like, like I'm saying, it's only one year. However, we haven't had anybody, like, after one year say, you know. Hate it, they hate it, they hate it. No, and they never hate it. What if it's their property, they, wouldn't have, they have to approve it. So exactly. does anybody have any other questions? Yes. 
<coughs> no, it, if, if it's like a freshly painted white beige wall, you can paint right on top of that. If the wall looks crappy, then they have to like prime it, paint it, paint it solid. What? Yes. No. I mean, like, they can't w deal a six months or whatever, but, like, people have jobs and lives and things like that, I understand. <laughs> this isn't, it's not the five-year plan. So, does anybody have any other questions? Yes, ma'am? I want to say, I think, I think so. Yeah. I think it does, and I think that it definitely brings more traffic during the art walk. I mean, sometimes I get mural tours that I have 60 people on. So, yeah, it, it, it does bring people down there for sure. But what I really enjoy is that I get feedback from locals with this particular project if I'm like walking around because our, our studio, our painting studio is down there. And so I'm, I'm in downtown Hollywood a lot. And if, if I'm just walking around and it's somebody that I see a lot like walking back and forth and they're a local and they're like, oh yeah, so you're the person that's in charge of all the murals. I really love it. It's so much fun. I bring my friends when they come in, you know, from Miami and I show it off and, you know, and, and they really, really take ownership for it and it's exciting for them. And it doesn't cost anybody any money. It's easy. You can stand in front of them and Instagram them. There's so many benefits to having this type of artwork as long in my, and this is my opinion, as long as it's well curated and high quality, um, you know, high quality artwork and trained professionals and good quality paint. As long as it's something like that, I think that it's a benefit to just about anywhere, even places that have historic buildings. Because remember, this is just paint on a wall. It's not a big change. It's not a big scary object that's going somewhere. It's paint on a wall. And you have to paint your buildings generally anyways, unless they're made of brick or stone or anything like that. So it's something that I feel is um, a really fun thing and can enliven a lot of, a lot of areas. Yes. Yeah, we have we have murals on historic buildings. Yeah, because we have the plaques up and the murals like right by the plaque for sure. It's just paint on a wall. It, we have a different type of. Uh, yeah, we. The, I don't know if you guys know this, but Hollywood, Florida, is the only historic business district in Florida. It's a, it's, it's a city, it's like under the umbrella of the CRA's marketing department. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the property owner probably will post about it, but like, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it's, it's not like a hard, super hard marketing plan for each mural or anything, just the project in general. Sometimes you hear, if you listen to Pandora, it talks about the mural tour if you're in the area or in their demo. Yes, sir? No, that's done on purpose. So the downtown, there's, there's barriers there, right? That's, I work for the CRA, which is the Community Redevelopment Assist, uh, Community <laughs> Redevelopment <laughs> Sorry, too many things at one time. So anyways, I work for, basically I'm under the umbrella of City of Hollywood, right, with this project. Um, so there are CRA boundaries, and what that is, is it's meant to enliven the area and bring traffic to that area. So that's why that particular area has the murals. If you want to do a mural in Hollywood elsewhere, it's quite difficult. You have to go through planning, I believe. Oh, wonderful. Definitely in Hollywood, it's a violation. So you have to go through planning. If, um, you know, if you want to contact me, we can talk more about it. I am happy to talk to you and see if there's any way we can help. You know, because I, I, you know, I like beautification, but um, you just have to, like, 
like I said, kind of keep it, keep it high quality. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody have anything else? Yes? What about bringing these to kind of to other cities, like Toronto, they all They are already kind of, yeah. If you look close enough, I think in the, if you go to Pompano in that little area, that little arts area, there's some murals up there. And, um, you know, there's something called, oh, I can't remember the, I can't remember the first name, but it's like, it used to be called something like Florida's Mural Trail. And if you Google that, there's like this um, website that has like, there's a whole bunch of different types of projects throughout Florida, and there's tons of them in the United States. If we are proud to have Philadelphia is been, is been legendary in that they've been doing murals in Philadelphia since the 1980s as a way to um, help to curb um, vandalism. They gave them walls that they could do instead of like, you know, um, so it curbed vandalism. But they have hundreds and hundreds of murals. They have so many, and they're, they're the largest in the nation for sure, but I don't know about the world. But like there's tons, if you go to Amsterdam, that's a mural hotspot. If you go to England, if you go, there's places in France. So it's everywhere. You just have to research it and you'll find, you'll find stuff. Yes, anyone else, are we good? Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. And I think that, I mean, if you really look at Hollywood, it's one of the slower to develop places and I think they're doing it at a good pace because they're not really going too fast. I don't think they're going to have any problem embracing having this awesome attraction that will attract young people to their condos. In fact, I know the Cirque, which is a hotel that opens on the northeast corner of the circle right there, they have hotel rooms inside that are artist decorated. So they embrace the arts. Um, they, they really do. Yeah, they're bringing it indoors, so it's cool. So I, I don't think anybody has a problem with it, really. I mean, because the quality's there. Yeah. The quality's there, you know?